perfect. But they now realize this country is going to be brought down if we don't turn things around and stop this hijacking of the government by select groups at the top. I agree with you. Not well, I know of Roger Stone. I don't know him personally, but I've had a lot of respect for him. But I've had an immense amount of respect for Trump. And I'll give you an example. When he went on your radio, he went into detail about Afghanistan, that we sent our boys to die there for no reason, while the Chinese are picking up rare earth, lithium, and all the other minerals. And he was right on. Then he talked about inversion, which Hillary Clinton has no idea about. Obama has no idea because he thinks that Goldman Sachs is a brilliant entity, although he knows it's as crooked as the day is long. And this is the kind of man that we need right now. We don't have a year. And if I can say anything to your audience, we do not have one year left to live out this administration. Stop it right there. Uh, Steve, I want you to uh, skip this break. It's so important. I want you to flesh out. Because a lot of people say, and Trump said, well, you know, it'll make him a martyr politically if we go after him. He's in so much trouble. You know, I don't know if we have time in the next year. But my concern is the way Obama's acting, the way his people are acting, the way they're getting really nasty and, and really making more and more stuff up, they're acting like they're getting ready to move against the American people. And, and so if you agree with that, I'd like to know what you think we should be watching out for, what they might pull. Well... What I agree with is that he is out of control and he's never, he's not, he's fronting for an organization that's consisting of the Pritzkers, the Chicago Rami Emanuel, who, by the way, was being prosecuted for incompetency, lying, and distortion, even by the New York Times. And what we had it was a distraction in San Bernardino from his good friend and buddy from childhood, Rami Emanuel and the Chicago mob. And that's part of what San Bernardino was about, was to take away the attention when the New York Times asked for the resignation of Rami Emanuel and the entire government of Chicago. So what we expect to have is more denial, more crimes, and more distortions of the truth. What we need to do is to initiate a referendum where we will ask the president to step down. I do not want an assassination. What I want is a, a referendum where the people say we can no longer wait for a year. We do not want anyone else, and we will want to nominate, by choice, Trump. And either we have the elections now or we don't have the elections. We do not have one more year. And all this nonsense that's going on where ISIS is supposedly creating terrorist attacks all over the world, which they're not, quite frankly. If they're, they're, you've got to remember the two leaders of ISIS. The, the soul and the military arm were both in our prisons in Baghdad for over eight months. And if anybody in your audience believes that we in the military or the intelligence community didn't double up these guys, and ISIS should know this, and every Sunni... They would have never been released. Government. They would have been given acid baths if they of weren't course. double agents. They are double agents for us. So anybody who follows these fools knows that they're following CIA and military intelligence operatives who've been doubled by us easily, and then we create the false flags, the, the false enemies, which basically we claim are Muslims. The Muslims are not our enemies. They are the enemies, perhaps, of Israel, who has a problem with their survival, but we are not... Well, I'll say this. Obviously, Wahhabis being brought in is meant for there to be attacks, so the government's <laughs> bringing them in. They are, at the top of the food chain, guilty. Now, let me be very frank. In my business, and they know this from my past experiences, it's easy for me to take out the Wahhabis and the Salafis in Saudi Arabia and Pakistan. That's the easiest work I can do. But fortunately, they're not letting me or others do that kind of work because they're easy to neutralize the way they were neutralized in other countries and other worlds, which I was involved with. But unfortunately, our government is involved in creating these episodes, like Bush Sr. was involved in allowing Noriega to start agitation propaganda. Why? Because he wanted an excuse to send in the 82nd Well, well absolutely, but here's forward. my question. I think they've misjudged the calculus to be able to bring in radical jihadis, have them attack us, and then take our guns and restrict internet free speech as Hillary's trying to do. I see how they brought them in to let them do it. I get it's a false flag ultimately because they brought them in. Correct. I just don't the see how they is, think they'll get away with that. Well, let me put this one. I, I really have to look back at San Bernardino and you look at Como, uh, Como the interviewer, 
in the newspaper in the and the and CB, on uh, CBS or ABC where he asked the lawyer, uh, you know, there are many holes in this story. Number one, both the husband and wife were handcuffed. Number two, they were able to Twitter while they were shooting. Number three, you know, you have a high military operation where even if you were a black widow, you couldn't be trained in this, particularly if you're 90 pounds. And the other gentleman, the other man had no idea of how to deal with military capacity. But there was a third man who nobody talked about. My point to you is this is consistent with Sandy Hook. Once you have lied, once you have contrived false scenarios, just go all the way. Continuously be a liar, and you will continuously be. Well, there is some the evidence that, that the husband and wife were decoys, and there were other shooters, and that's usually how you do exactly. it. Exactly, that's exactly sure. A must. Have. But the issue isn't this. The issue is much greater. Do we? Can we continue with a criminal like Obama, who is protected by incompetent Secret Service? that has been rife with uh, uh, prostitution, alcoholism. And Dr. Bajenik, stay there. we got to go to break in 60 seconds. Okay. Stay there. We're going to come back, and we're going to get into some of his uh, anti-terrorism operations he was in because they're so interesting. What he can talk about, a lot of it still partially classified, uh, but really interesting fellow. And, yeah, when he comes on the show, then I guess they try to indict him and stuff for the things he talks about. That's so why I don't know the audience realizes the stuff you're hearing here. I mean, this, this guy really is very interesting, uh, to say the least. We'll be right back. Don't forget, free shipping until December 18th at InfoWarsStore.com. And your purchase makes it all possible. InfoWarsStore.com. All right, five-minute segment here, 12-minute segment coming up uh, with Dr. Steve Pachenik. We've got a reporter from San Bernardino, California, joining us with via uh, video and audio feeds at the bottom of the hour, Joe Biggs and others. Don Salazar just ran in here and he said what Dr. Pachenik just talked about, there being other reported shooters, is, is true. And I remember seeing that in the news, but we have a CBS News clip they're going to put in the computer we're going to play later next segment. Where one witness said, said, no, there were three tall white males with guns that were shooting people. There was an active shooter drill there. I mean, the mathematics of that happening and this happening, I get it. I really haven't gone there. My reporters have. I've been attacked in the Washington Post over it because I don't care. They opened the door and brought these people in to begin with. So it's a false flag any way you slice it. But I tell you, I'm so sick of everything being a false flag. But it just the evidence just mounts and mounts and mounts. And then the fact they think we're so dumb that they would let people attack us or bring them in or do it and then blame our guns and blame the internet for it really shows how stupid they think we are. Dr. Pachinik, we've only got three, four minutes left in this segment, long one coming up, but uh, specifically, what do you make of that? And then let's start talking about real terrorism that you've actually dealt with. Real terrorism doesn't occur on a false flag. When I had to deal with a Hanafi Muslim in 1978, Carter had created the situation accidentally, and I had, I had 500 hostages in three buildings. The FBI correctly called me in under the auspices of the U.S. prosecutor. And what I did was to take the Quran and basically use the talents of three Muslim ambassadors, uh, Yahub Khan, Gurbal, and Zahidi, one Egyptian and one Iranian. And we were very effective in disarming a man who had killed about four or five people. That was real terrorism. And that was the first time the issue of stopping a Mohammed film and the fact that we had to release hostages was an issue, and I didn't release any hostages, and I, and I didn't allow him to continue. He was declared mentally ill, but I knew his background, and basically we disarmed him, even though Jamie Carter was not very helpful, and I was disobedient. The point here that I'm trying to say to your public, and you have said repeatedly, is you must be disobedient. I'm asking our military and our intelligence officers to be disobedient, because if you're not, you're going to destroy this country. And the only reason why I survived was I was a Navy captain, a deputy assistant secretary of state, and I said to the president, you're wrong, and I, you stand down or you fire me. And I continued. I did the same thing again when it was in Panama, where Bush tried that, and I explained it to the CIA operatives that if you continue this, I will get you into trouble. I did the same thing in Cambodia where the CIA got involved again, created distortion, denial, and we disarmed them using other techniques that I cannot go into. So the primary problems we have in the United States is not Muslim or Christian or any religion or ideology. 
It is the dysfunctional aspects of a CIA and an intelligence community that has grown out of proportion. We now have 16 different intelligence units that do absolutely nothing, are paid trillions of dollars, is run now by a Navy uh, admiral who really never had any experience in intelligence, was a submarine commander, was run before by a general who was in G2 and had many degrees, but this cannot continue. We do not have a Congress, a president, or a military and intelligence that is viable and concerned about our national security. And that's where America has to have the American Revolution in a way that's productive and constructive. Why you are important and why Trump was important is you are the game changer. You are the expression of that American Revolution in the 21st century. To allow the truth to come out, St. Augustine said, don't worry about the truth. Let it do what it does best to destroy those who distort the truth. So I quote St. Augustine and I say to the American people, please don't give up and don't give up hope. Stand by what you believe and demand a referendum to get this president out and demand accountability from Bush, Clinton and others for criminal acts. We'll be back. And we will win. We'll be back. Stay with us. Dr. Shannon Sarkast. While we see radical jihadists brought into the country, whether it's false flag or not, we see the president saying it's the fault of the Second Amendment that would cause a revolution in this country if they come for the guns. We have Obama saying, I'm going to put you on a no-fly list and you can't own guns extrajudicially. Where are the constitutional lawyers pointing out this is a constitution-killing initiative? Meanwhile, new Star Wars plot is cloaked in unprecedented secrecy and theaters plan contest fans to watch for days until they drop. I mean, the movie looks unwatchable. They get the worst actors. I thought the guy that played Darth Vader last time, you know, looked like a kid from a school play. Now they've got some other new lead actor who is just as bad an actor. And, and this is our big cultural experience. World governments being established. Huge military escalations between Turkey and Russia. Turkey's now moved in troops into uh, Iraq. All hell's breaking loose. The Turkish president's threatening to uh, blow up Russian ships. If that happens, it, you know what's going to happen. The Russians are going to respond. It's going to escalate very, very quickly. And the average American, the average young person especially, I'm talking about 25, 30-year-olds, is drooling over Star Wars. Drooling. And they're so bad. It's like one big giant Jar Jar Binks nightmare. So revolutionary in 1977, not revolutionary today. Horrible. James Earl Jones and Alec Guinness, these people are not, to quote Yoda. Penis transplants being planned to help wounded troops. Wow. Yeah, they weren't paying for so many sex changes for everybody else that might have the money. Scientists turn to religion for climate action. Yeah, they're now trying to fund uh, groups uh, to, to stop the satanic denial of that. Uh, we've got Venezuela opposition uh, is basically taking over the legislature. Socialists are on the run. Oil's the lowest it's been in seven years. That's some of the news up on DrudgeReport.com, up on Infowars.com. Obama, six years later, calls Fort Hood a terrorist attack. J.P. Morgan and Citigroup agree that the U.S. economy is steamrolling towards recession. Oh, they finally come out and said it. Former Congressman Joe Walsh goes on anti-Islam rant, dares Loretta Lynch to prosecute him. Regardless of what you think of Islam or radical Islam, don't you have the free speech? Now, we've got a Don Salazar in the control room. I want him to introduce this clip, and we'll get Dr. Pachinik's take on it, saying that how was there a drill at the exact same time of this happening with armed military police there. I mean, that that is super rare. And it just keeps happening at false flags. And then you've got witnesses saying they saw white guys running around. Well, see, the globalist up above it may have had the police there for a drill to confuse everything even more in case something went wrong. See, a lot of times the drill isn't people that are part of it. That's why they had folks in the 7-7 bombing admit, we were running a drill with the exact same trains and exact same bus being bombed at the exact same time. Scotland Yard was part of it. Well, they weren't part of it to go on the news and say, it's crazy we were running a drill. They were hired for smog, for confusion, for fog of war, in case any of the false flaggers got caught 
then they just say, oh, it's part of a drill. Or, or maybe Dr. Pachinik can correct me and explain how that works.